Hello everyone and welcome to another Tuesday evening lesson app here on YouTube with B'nai Baruch <coughs> Education Center. And today what we're going to do is carry on with our excerpts from the morning lesson. And as you may know, you probably do know, that we've started um, selected excerpts from, um, well, regarding PESA, right? So we've got PESA coming up in the middle of April, 15th of April, I think. That's a Friday evening. Uh, and... And as you know, well, like I said, we're doing the topic of PESA in the morning lesson. So what better way to continue than to do what we're doing in the morning lesson and also prepare ourselves for this festive season, right? So it's very important for us to understand what PESA is, is spiritually, um, because as you know, we're not doing anything corporeally and we're not really what you call a ceremonial group, right? So we were like studying everything in terms of inner work and inner progress in our spiritual growth. And all the holidays, the special days, they have a spiritual meaning. So it's very important for us to actually relate to the spiritual side of things. And, you know, the uh, festive kind of stuff, we can still keep and have a good meal, okay? But we need to understand that everything is dependent on the connection and how we improve our inner uh, traits. All right, so we're gonna move on and get started. So we're starting with excerpt number one and that first topic is called Going Down to Egypt. <clears throat> and the subtitle is Abraham's Question, by what will I know that I will inherit it? Now the text, a Kabbalistic text, right? But this is what we study every Tuesday. So obviously, if you're new to the YouTube channel or you just fell out of the sky and came here, that's fine, welcome. But it might be a better idea if you watch the uh, Education Center lessons, like from lesson one onwards. And if you're really interested in the wisdom of Kabbalah, you can always go to um, our Education Center site, which is on kabbalah.info. And there you can go to the CabU Academy, where you can join like-minded people and, you know, start a course if you like. All right, so let's read it and let's see how things flow. If you've got any questions, jot them down as usual. We'll try to decipher them from the text ourselves and do our best. Forget the rest. All right. The souls cannot receive the good reward for which he created the world and the souls, if they do not have a vessel ready to receive. And the only way one can obtain that vessel is through labor and toil to observe the commandments through the pressure and the wars that one fights with the evil inclination and the numerous preventions and troubles. The affliction and labor in Torah and mitzvot provide a vessel for the soul so it may be fit to receive all the delight and pleasure for which he created all creations. All right, so let's read twice as usual, as it is custom, and we'll see what's trying to tell us, right? The excerpts, like I said, are not very easy because they're Kabbalistic texts and some of them are quite old. <clears throat> the souls cannot receive the good reward for which he created the world and the souls if they do not have a vessel ready to receive it. So the purpose of creation is for all of us to actually have a great life right, to be happy, to be joyful, to have everything that we, uh, that we can 
Well, that we'd like to have, all right? However, though, we need to have a proper vessel for it. Like, just like we can't give our children uh, a bunch of diamonds because they just won't know how to, you know, have to play with it. They won't know the value of a diamond. They'll think it's like a marble and they'll lose it by tomorrow, okay? So in order for us to understand the value of spiritual attainment, we need to have something like called a vessel, which is like an understanding, you know, like what I want. I need to clarify for myself what exactly I want, why I want it. So without that, it's not really going to be a vessel to receive anything. And the only way one can obtain that vessel is through labor and toil to observe the mitzvot the commandments through the pressure and the wars one fights with the evil inclination and the numerous preventions and troubles. So basically what we have to do is just like in, in our corporeal life, right? If we want to attain anything, we have to work for it. We've got to try, we've got to work, and we have to you know, do our best to become what we want to become. If we want to be a musician, a, I don't know, an athlete, an actor, an engineer, a doctor, whatever you want to be in life, a lawyer, it doesn't matter. Whatever profession you want to be good at, you've got to work at it. And spirituality is no different. So if you want to get spiritual, you have to build for yourself a vessel that can perceive and feel what the creator wants to give you. In order for us to do that, we need to work at it. And that work is called observing the commandments. Now, obviously, it may not be obvious, but for us it is. It's not talking about religious commandments, right? Commandments means that I correct myself. I change myself for the better. And that change is called uh, a commandment, a mitzvah. It comes from the word order to command. Right. Through the pressure and the wars that one fights with the evil inclination. So as we try to advance in spirituality, what we should be discovering is how our desire to receive for, our, for ourselves is causing us a lot of trouble. All right. And you can see this in the world as well. Right. Currently, we have wars in the world. We've got a lot of um, hunger happening, starvation, all kinds of problems. Any problem humanity has, it's because of our evil inclination, which is called the desire to receive pleasure for myself. When I have a desire to receive pleasure for myself, I disregard others. And that's called egoism. And because our nature is egoism, it means I give more importance to myself when compared to others and well that how's that going to work out well that works out how the world is today right we're in complete chaos so if we do not have the same regard to everybody else as we do to ourselves then we're going to be in trouble because the stronger one because of this default nature is going to take more than necessary and that way it's going to cause trouble for everybody else and sooner or later what we get is wars, revolutions, fights, all kinds of troubles in the world. So understanding what is the evil inside of us is very important. And when we do the spiritual work, this will reveal itself. And our whole path is to discern that evil and to set it aside and not to use it. Because if I know something's harmful for me, despite the fact that I do like it, I will not use it if I understand it's harmful, right? So it's something like smoking, right? Smokers like to smoke, all right? They're not smoking because they hate to smoke. They love it, all right? And because they love it, they don't want to give it up. So the doctor says, listen, if you don't give up, you're going to die. So despite the fact that they love it, they stop it, okay? Because they understand it's bad for them, all right? Now, if the doctor hadn't told them that, they wouldn't have really cared, so go ahead, smoking, drinking, and do whatever you want, and then end up, whoa, dead, right? So not very nice, is it? So if we have a doctor that tells us, listen, if you carry on like this, you're going to go to the other side pretty quick, sooner than you think. So what we do is we take a step back, put the brakes on, and give up on the things we like, because we understand they cause us harm. If we do not see that our egoism, which we don't, causes us harm we carry on living the way we do or we try to anyway and if we carry on living the way that we're living currently right now you will see that the world has turned into a dustbin right so we've got trash all over the planet and we have a new continent in the sea it's called the plastic continent
All right, so in the middle of the ocean, as you can see, we've got a huge plastic waste. Why? Because human nature just wants to suck everything and we don't care about tomorrow. Now, despite the fact that there might be some environmentalist people and group, it's not enough. Because if one of us is greedy, then we all suffer. Right, so this is how it is with the whole of humanity. So what we have to do is first realize how our egoistic nature is bad for us. And the way to do that is to study the wisdom of Kabbalah in, a, um, in an environment, you know, like a laboratory with other people, so that we can actually, by observing ourselves from the outside, can discern what really bad is. All right. And taking the advice of the Kabbalists, we apply them and... We see our true nature. All right. Uh, and that is obviously, he says, preventions and troubles. Why? Because, well, it's not nice for a person to see how bad he is because everybody thinks they're nice. Right? Even bad people, they're proud of being bad. Right? Michael Jackson even had a song like that, I'm bad. Why? Because it was like, you know, if you're bad, it's like you're bad. You know, yeah. So obviously, if we don't understand that our nature is causing us dramas, we're not going to move forward much in life except with troubles. All right. So humanity will face severe problems, including wars, such as the bad one we've got right now between Russia and Ukraine, unfortunately. Plus, not to mention, we'll have all the side effects of that war, including, um, you know, hunger, lack of <clears throat> raw materials, all kinds of problems, right? So we're going to have a lot of dramas in the world. Um, just because two countries are in, in the war, it means we're all going to be impacted and affected by that in a negative way. All right, so the affliction and labor in our spiritual study and the commandments provide a vessel for the soul. So it may be fit to receive all the delights and pleasure for which he created all creations. So in order for us to really desire spirituality, we need to work at it. And that work, that labor, that you know, con constant hammering it should inside of us raise a desire to attain it more and more. All right. That's that. Any questions, let us know. And at the moment, it's all quiet on the Western Front, as they say. All right, so let's read excerpt number two. It's also from Balaslam. It's called Inheritance of the Land. Inheriting the land requires much preparation, since the merit of Torah and mitzvot depend entirely on this, as though it, as though it one is, as though if it should be, as though if one is rewarded with all the abundance and benefit that the Creator has contemplated with regard to all the souls of Israel before He created them. This is also why Abraham, the patriarch, was perplexed and did not understand from where they would take such a great vessel of reception as to be rewarded with the holiness of the land. Finally, the Creator told him that laboring in Torah and Miswot in the exile in Egypt will provide them with these great vessels and they will be fit for the holy land. All right, so we've got to have a few things sorted out here in terms of definition, right? Inheriting the land requires much preparation. Now, land is Eretz, right? Eretz comes from the word Ratzon, which is a desire. So having a desire for spirituality requires preparation. And the merit of it is the Torah and mitzvot. So we've got to work on it, right? So we've got, we have to work on the preparation of building a vessel, a desire for spirituality, as though if one is rewarded with all the abundance and benefit that the Creator has contemplated with regard to all the souls of Israel before he created them. So we have to work at it, like full on, basically. Okay, that's what I'm saying, work at it full on. And if we do, we will succeed. Now, he says here, um, that the Creator has contemplated with regard to all the souls of Israel. All the souls of Israel are, Israel comes from the word Yashar El, straight to the Creator. So anybody who directs himself to the Creator is called Israel. Obviously, we're not talking about the corporeal, corporeal life of 
the Israeli nation. Uh, but we're talking about a person who's directed to spirituality according to Kabbalistic definitions. All right, so this could be anyone from the world, right? doesn't matter what color, race, religion, doesn't matter. This is also why Abraham the patriarch was perplexed and did not understand from where they would take such great vessels of reception to be rewarded with the holiness of the land. So Abraham was a bit surprised. He says, well, why would they want spirituality? I mean, who cares, right? This is basically why he was perplexed. He, he was having a chat with the creator, as in the story, right? So he's perplexed about the situation. Why would anybody want spirituality? Why would we? We're a desire to receive pleasure for ourselves. Who wants to bestow and love others, right? Nobody. I just want myself to be happy, get what I want, have a good life, and we're all going to end up dead anyway, so we might as well have a good party while we're at it, okay? So that's how everybody is. That's what our nature is like. So Abraham is like thinking, well, you know, why would they want spirituality? Are they crazy? So the creator said, no, they're not crazy. I'm just going to make them suffer a little bit. It's called Egypt, all right? So we're going to send them down to Egypt, we're going to make slaves out of them. They're going to have a really, really tough cookie life. And they'll want to get out of this life. Because with suffering, you'd want to get out of anything. Right? So the creator has a plan. So what kind of suffering is expected in Egypt? The kind of suffering that person is in spirituality. He wants to advance in spirituality. But unfortunately, he just can't do it. Right? Because our nature does not allow us to do it. So here, that is what we're talking about, suffering. Now, if a person studying spirituality, the kind of suffering that person is going through is different with respect to the suffering that people in corporeality are going through. In corporeality, people suffer. Suffering softens them up, softens them up, right? So the more a person suffers, they become quieter. Their ego becomes quiet, okay, because they get slapped around a little bit, and then everybody's like, you know, easy, so that's how it is, in spirituality though, because we're voluntarily wanting to advance in spirituality, our suffering comes from the lack of success we have in the work, and that lack of success inside of us creates this tension called, you know, suffering, because we want to advance and we, we understand that our nature is not going to let us. The Pharaoh is our evil inclination. Okay, it's not some prince sitting on a throne. It's our evil inclination and we're suffering because of it. So going down to Egypt means we're studying spirituality and we want to advance. And as we advance, we understand that we just can't do it. So Pharaoh is giving us that evil inclination inside of us is not giving us any opportunity to advance. And that is the suffering we're going through in Egypt. All right. So suffering can be in many ways in life. And this is also obviously one of those situations for a person advancing in spirituality. That's what suffering is. Right. In addition to that, obviously, anybody who's studying the wisdom of Kabbalah also has daily troubles too. You know, health, family, um, God forbid, all kinds of stuff. Even, even you know, we've got amazing friends in Kiev and, and in the Ukraine and in Russia. So it's also a bit dramatic for them right now going through these states. And it's really hard to comprehend and understand. But at the end of the day, there's a purpose for life. And that purpose to life is to attain this high level of consciousness called the creator. And no matter what happens in life, we have to do our best despite all the troubles. We just have to do the best that we can do in order to move forward. All right. So let's also pray and hope that our friends in the Ukraine and Russia really hang in there so we can all, as one world group, as one world clique, can go over this and pass over this pretty soon and quickly. Okay. So that's how it is. So in corporeality, humanity suffers. And in spirituality, we're also going through that perplexed and troublesome states, many of them as well, as we advance in spirituality, um, as we begin to understand how 
problematic our egoistic nature really is. And also you can see how problematic our egoistic nature is if you just look at the world. If you understand that our nature is run on a desire to receive pleasure all the time, and the software for it is egoism, then you can pretty much deduct um, you know, from all the things that humanity is going through that the, the pure reason, there's only one reason really for all the suffering in the world, and that is our egoism. That we always want to be higher than others, degrade others, and we enjoy being on top of others. And that unfortunately is bringing all the destruction to the world. All right, including the wars. Let's go on to item number three. This is from Rabash. All right. And let's see what he says. Rabash, article number 14. What is the need to borrow vessels from the Egyptians? And he said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord, God, by what will I know that I will inherit it? And he said to Abraham, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will be enslaved and oppressed 400 years. And afterwards, they will come out with many possessions. Here too, we should understand the answer that Abraham received to the question, by what will I know that I will inherit it. Since the creator's answer was to this question as it is written, and he said to Abraham, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And afterwards, they will come out with many possessions. Thus, the question was about guarantees on the inheritance. And the answer to the guarantee was that the people of Israel will be in exile. But this exile, a guarantee for, in, but is exile a guarantee for inheriting the land? While Islam explained the meaning of this question, it is known that there is no light without a vessel. That is, it is impossible to receive filling if there's no lack. A lack is called a kli, and when Abraham saw that the creator wanted to give his sons what he wanted to give his sons, he said, I do not see that my sons will have a need for that spiritual inheritance of the land. All right, so let's take a look and go through that again. All right, so it's a bit of a uh, you know, confusing um, article because it's like Abraham and the creator have a, are having a dialogue, right? So this is probably like Abraham seeing how this is going to pan out. And he's thinking it's not going to pan out. How's, how's it going to work out? So you can't really understand why, because in every level, right, we have confusion about the next one. So in order to in order to come from A to B, we have to go through many states so that B can be clarified. And B is only clarified when we go beyond B. Right? I can't clarify B as I'm getting to B. I can't clarify B when I'm in B. I got to clarify it when I'm over B. Right? So and he's, let's read that again. And he said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord, God, by what will I know that I will inherit it? So the creator said to him, listen, you guys are all going to get spiritual, basically. All right? You're going to inherit the land, a desire for spirituality. So Abraham said, how am I going to know this is going to happen? Okay. How will I know this will happen? And he said to Abraham, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that's not theirs. So Abraham's descendants will be in all kinds of desires that do not belong to spirituality. All right, so we're going to be in absolute corporeality to the deep end. And they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. So we're going to be so overtaken by our egoistic desires, that that's the only thing we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be enslaved to our desires for 400 years. Why for 400 years? Because that's a full degree, right? So it's a complete measure that I'm completely swamped and overwhelmed with something. And 
you know, I've got to have a complete measure. It's like until I get to a certain amount of suffering, I don't move. I won't move. All right. So, but as life pushes me, pushes me, pushes me, I get to a point where I can't tolerate a state anymore. And then I just do something to get out of that state. Same here. So consider that 400 years as a complete state where I come to a point where I just cannot tolerate the way I'm living at the moment. All right. And afterwards, they will come out with many possessions. Why? Because they'll come out with many discernments. That's what possessions really are, right? All the experiences that they went through as they were going through all these states are now going to be the things that they're going to use for their spiritual advancement. Here too, we should understand the answer that Abraham received to the question, by what will I know that I will inherit it? Since the creator's answer was to this question, as it's written, and he said to Abraham, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and afterwards they will come out with many possessions. Thus, the question was about guarantees on the inheritance. And the answer to the guarantee was that the people of Israel will be in exile, but is exile a guarantee for inheriting the land? Right? So it's like the answer the, the creator gives doesn't really match the question. Right? So Abraham says, well, how am I going to know they're going to inherit the land? And the creator says, well, I'm going to send them off to all kinds of places. So like, how is that connected? Okay. So that's the confusion. But is exile a guarantee for inheriting the land? While some explain the meaning of this question, it is known that there is no light without a vessel. That is, it is impossible to receive filling if there's no lack. A lack is called a vessel. And when Abraham saw that the creator wanted to, Abraham saw what the creator wanted to give his sons, he said, I do not see that my sons will have a need for that spiritual inheritance of the land. Okay, so no desire, no feeling. They're, they're basically, that's what he's saying. And then Abraham is looking at the world overall. Overall, he's looking at the creation. He's thinking, you know, why would they want spirituality? Why would anybody want to bestow to others? You've got to be crazy, okay? Because our nature is to want to get, you know, to be out there, do whatever we want, attain whatever we want. Why would anybody? want to put all that aside and want to bestow. So he's confused about how this is all going to work out. All right. So that's where we're at. Oh, are there questions? There is one. Astley is asking, what do we have to do when we come across with a desire which does not belong to us? What do we have to do when we come across with a across a desire which does not belong to us. Well, you know, no, none of our desires really belong to us. Most of the things we want is what we see, right? So I can't really say this is coming out of me. The things that come out from us are the ones that really sustain our lives. So we need what food, drink, family, you know, that kind of stuff. So that kind of maintains us. And everybody has this desire, companionship and so forth. But beyond that, money, uh, respect, control, knowledge, all of that are social desires. So if I'm inside a you know, society, inside any society, whatever they want is what I want. This is even how we select our profession, right? Our profession, we select according to what people value. Nobody wants to be in a profession or in a job or in any kind of situation that the society does not value, right? So we do what we can, to do something that you know is respected and is good in the eyes of society but that's not you know what we really want to do so none of our desires really belong to us what we have to discern here is by studying spirituality inside a group a spiritual group what happens is i i begin to discern between two states that i'm in so i'm in a corporeal society i live with corporeal people right and i'm also in a spiritual society so the spiritual society is telling me, listen, spirituality is great. Let's, you know, move forward with spirituality. And corporeality is telling me, hey, why don't we just do whatever we like, go and buy, spend, 
and you know really party there and you're thinking okay that sounds good as well and that sounds good as well because inside you've got a dot in the heart so now you've got to make a discernment right so you're in between states okay but this this doesn't belong to you and this doesn't belong to you either you are the, the person in the middle okay so then you have to make a decision you have to think well what do i want from these two and that's always going to be a dilemma okay that's always going to be a dilemma so we got to work on it we have to see and we have to discern what is more important what we want and so on so we just basically choosing from the options that we have in front of us because our desire to receive pleasure it's by default, it's by nature. So I can't say it's really mine. This is just how we're created, right? And the dot in the heart, well, it just pops up. I can't really say I determined that now at this year and date, my dot in the heart will awaken and then I'll start spirituality. We don't know that kind of stuff, right? So these things just happen. Um, and because they just happen, I can't really relate anything to myself regarding any of my desires, but I can observe my desires, right? That opportunity I do have. Because if I have two different environments that I'm in, one spiritual, one corporeal, I can observe corporeality from the spiritual. I can observe spirituality from my corporeal state. I can be in between both. I can give them both a look. I can weigh things. I can calculate things. I can compare things. I can, uh, you know, I can... Uh, I can choose what I want to be influenced by. If I'm in just one environment, like a corporeal environment, then I'm always going to be influenced by corporeal desires, many of them, but it will all be corporeality. It will just be about me filling myself up, whether it's food, family, sex, money, um, respect, power, knowledge. It will always be about filling myself up. And this is what humanity is all doing. They're just fulfilling their desires to receive for themselves and you know, going through a life cycle and then ending up dead. So in corporeality, you've got that. In spirituality, you've got another in mind saying, listen, this is all well. You don't have to change anything in corporeality, but you can add something else to your life, which is called spirituality. Okay? By adding spirituality, then you can actually begin to understand and decipher your corporeal life as well. Okay, and by doing so, you can actually have a better corporeal life, right? And the reason a lot of people do not have a good corporeal life, this is why we've got a lot of divorces happening around the world. We've got drug, violence, drugs, all kinds of bad things happening in the world. Why? Because we do not know how to relate to our lives properly. Why? Because we're lacking this Kabbalistic education about understanding our nature and how to balance it out. And if we don't know that, we all go crazy. So a majority of the uh, society in, in, in the modern world right now, they're all on what Prozacs, all kinds of, I don't know, all kinds of you know, prescription drugs just to calm themselves down. And everybody's going crazy. So we get domestic violence, you know, like violence on the streets, and everybody wants to just get disconnected from this reality because we can't handle it. And the only way you can handle things in corporeality is to raise yourself above corporeality. And that's what spirituality allows you to do. Okay. So the way to treat your desires, how you can like analyze them, sort them out understand what's useful and what's not useful is to actually study the wisdom of Kabbalah as well so you can get a different perspective and then you can make a proper calculation on what's worthwhile doing okay. right yeah then can move on to excerpt number four The, uh, okay, this is also from Ravash. This is article number 14. The connection between Passover, Matzah, and Maror. Okay, so these are like a little bit like these excerpts are from the heavy guns. All right, so these are heavy articles, a little excerpts from heavy articles. So if you're really new to all this, this may sound a little off, 
and not understood. But you know, just bear with us and let's see what they're trying to tell us. And maybe we'll have um, some kind of insight to kind of translate it to a 21st century language we can understand. Abraham asked the creator, how will I know that I will inherit it? Since they haven't the vessels or the need for the great inheritance that you're showing me that you will give to my sons. They haven't the need. To this, the creator replied to him, I will give them a need for the lights, just as I will give them the lights. In other words, the creator will give them both the lights and the vessel. Do not think that I bestow only the abundance. Rather, I bestow upon them both the need, which is called a vessel, and the abundance. This is called lack and filling. By the people of Israel being in exile in Egypt 400 years, which is a complete degree of four discernments, by being in exile in a land that is not theirs, meaning that the Egyptians will impart Israel with a desire for self-reception, a desire that does not belong to holiness, which is called the land, from the word desire. And they're wanting to escape to that desire when I make them unable to come out of that governance by themselves and see that only the creator can help them and they will have no other choice but to ask me for help. All right, so that's beginning to make a little bit more sense, actually. So let's read that again and decipher, um, or I'll try to decipher, try to see how we can get deeper into it. Abraham asked the creator, how will I know that I will inherit it? Since they haven't the vessel or the need for the great inheritance that you show me that you will give to my sons, they haven't the need. Now, this is true, right? As we study spirituality, we begin to discover that we don't want spirituality, right? We initially study, start to study spirituality with a desire, but we don't really know what spirituality is, right? So we come to the wisdom of Kabbalah. We're all nice and fun in games. We're all excited because we're learning these new things and we've got a purpose in life now. So we think so we can, you know, pick up the flags and start running forward. And then all of a sudden the Kabbalists say, yeah, listen, you want to run forward, you better give everything you've got. So all of a sudden, he's thinking, wait a minute, I thought I was supposed to get everything. Yeah, you are, but by giving everything up. Okay, so that becomes a bit of a drama, and then everybody thinks, wait a minute, that's not a fair game. That doesn't, like, add up, all right? So, you know, according to our egoistic nature, how can that add up? It won't. And because it doesn't add up, Abraham, being on the path, understands that for a person to want spirituality with his right mind egoistically is just not possible. It's just not possible, not even far-fetched or crazy. It is impossible. So the creator says, relax, I got this covered. Okay, so he says, how? Well, I'm going to give them a lot of suffering. And then they'll ask the question, why are we suffering? Okay, so that then is already a step forward. And this is why humanity is going forward through suffering. Despite our intelligence, why are we constantly suffering more and more? Because we cannot overcome our egoistic nature. So the creator says, okay, this is really important because at the end of the day, what does it say? It says, um, the, it says, when I make them unable to come out of that governance by themselves and see that only the creator can help them. So humanity on the one side is really smart. We can do really great stuff. But because our nature is egoistic, we use our intelligence, our sophistication to do bad stuff all the time. So the world's constantly going in a bad way, right? And because it's going in a bad way, we're all suffering. So as we suffer more and more and more, we're going to get to a point where it's going to become intolerable. And then we'll say, what's going on? And this is how humanity develops. Now, same with anybody who develops in spirituality as well. In your personal life, you come to a point where you're thinking to yourself, what is going on? And then you ask the question, why am I living? This isn't worth it, okay? It just doesn't add up, right? We're running around and round and round, 
chasing our own tail. You never get to be happy. Nothing ever turns out the way you really want it to be. Despite the fact that you can actually get what you want, you're still left like with an empty vessel because desire and you know pleasure, they cancel each other out. So you begin to understand that this game that we're playing here, chasing all kinds of desires just doesn't make sense because your happiness and the, the joy you get from things is always fleeting pleasures. They're all vaporizing. You never get anything stable. You never get anything constant and permanent that you can say, I'm always in this pleasurable mode. It just doesn't happen. So humanity begins to ask, and this is how individuals wake up and ask about the meaning of life as well. And this is how we all come to the wisdom of Kabbalah. Right, so we've gone through a state where we've had enough with corporal reality. Now, this is what the creator is doing, right, to humanity. Now, to us as well, he's done the same thing. Now, when you start studying the wisdom of Kabbalah, you're kind of going through the same state, but at a spiritual understanding, right? So, in order, because we don't want spirituality, our egoistic desire to receive will not want spirituality, but if I'm studying spirituality to move forward in spirituality, somehow with the environment and the help of the environment, in fact, the help of the creator as well, because how can we really move forward in spirituality when it's completely against our nature? We just can't do it. So the creator is actually helping us, and that's called the dot in the heart. And when we use the environment correctly with the other people who've got a dot in the heart, then somehow I'm trotting along. All right, and sometimes I'm dragging my feet, sometimes I'm falling, and then I get up, and so on. So this, we're going through a lot of states, but we're progressing. Now, in corporeal reality, what did we have? We came to a point where life was meaningless. Now we started studying spirituality. Then we come to a point where we're thinking, wait a minute, this spirituality is just, it's just meaningless because I'm supposed to do everything that I really cannot do because my nature is just not bestowable. I can't do it. So you end up in a dilemma. Then you ask the creator for help. What can you ask for? Well, you want to bring us to bestowal, fair enough, but we don't want it. So you've got to give us the desire for it. Because we're working and working and working. Years are going by. Who wants to really bestow? Come on. So the creator has to help you out. How? If you turn to the creator. Why do you need to turn to the creator and why can you not do this on your own? Then you'll never have contact with the creator. You'll never have that higher level of understanding. Remember, the purpose of life is to attain spirituality, which is attain the creator, to be like him. If I could do it on my own, I would not attain his level. I would, I would stay at the level I was created in, which being an animal. Because if I want to go to a higher state, I've got to connect with a higher state. Just like children have to connect with the parents if they want to grow up. If they don't, they, can't, they, they won't be able to grow up, right? If you want to grow up, you always have to connect with a higher state. So these are laws of nature. And the creator did it in such a way in order to raise us. We need a hand from a higher state, a higher level. So this, um, all of these states that we go through actually develop a desire in us to want to get spiritual with the understanding that we can't do it. So we're in a dilemma, right? On the one hand, we want to move forward with the dot in the heart. But on the other hand, our nature doesn't want it. So we're left in a, in a dilemma. Just like um, I mentioned a minute ago about the two environments, right? We've got corporal reality and spirituality. Now imagine the same state inside you, right? You've got the dot in the heart plus your nature, desire to receive pleasure for yourself. So you're left, you're torn in between these two things. You're trying to study spirituality with your dot in the heart and advance, but your corporal reality, your essence, your nature is not allowing it to happen. So you've got two opposite states at the same time in one person. And that is causing us all the grief in spirituality. Because on the one hand, 
you want to advance and you're studying to advance but on the other hand it's just a dead end right so you need the creator to be integrated into the situation this is why you need to turn to the creator to give you a hand what's that hand desire for spirituality and the ability to bestow which is the vessel and the light all right because you're only going to get the light if you're able to bestow so as we progress forward we should have the ability to cause a restriction on our desires which means i should be able to discern decipher and have some kind of strength to understand that these desires i do not want to use because they're just causing me harm or stalling me or slowing me down or not allowing me allowing me to advance in spirituality so i'm setting them aside that brings us to what we call a restriction obviously the creator is bringing us to that state right because it's a phase of development so the creator is going to bring us to that restriction the creator is going to build the screen the creator is going to give us the ability to bestow just like we give the kids all the opportunities and all the situations they need in order to grow and this is how it's going to work exactly in the same way but just like kids ask we need to ask the creator all the time as well and that's the whole trick because we're grown up we don't really feel like asking the creator we want to do it ourselves and that doesn't really work out right so it takes a lot of time a lot of years for a person to study 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 and then to finally understand that he can't do it and he needs the hand of the creator to help him out and he starts to pray and then there's a tipping point where that's the only thing he does he just sits and prays and doesn't do anything else Okay, that's it. And that is how we move forward. Why? Because that comes through an understanding over many years that you just can't do it. You just don't have any other choice. So let the, just, just scream to the creator all day, all night, and let him do the job. It's not a bad idea, actually. We scream and he does the job. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Right? If we understood that sooner than later, we would save ourselves a lot of grief. Okay. Okay. Just keep crying. Say, you do it. You do it. You do it. I can't do it. You do it. And you'll finally give up and say, oh, all right. Okay. Just like we do with the kids. They keep screaming, crying, duh, 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 and you just want him to shut up after a while. And what do you do? Just say, here, take this and do whatever. All right. And that's exactly how we should be doing. So going through Egypt, going through the state called Egypt is actually understanding, clarifying and seeing how our nature doesn't allow us to advance in a good, healthy way towards the creator spirituality. And but by only seeing that state, can we turn to the creator? So all of these need to happen. There's no need to be afraid of these situations and states. These are all inner clarifications. The, you know, the more we work, obviously, the more we uh, exert in effort, the faster we'll move forward. And the more we, the, the, and the faster we move forward, actually, we accelerate humanity as well, because we're all living inside an interconnected system. So for the ability to kind of like push humanity as well uh, is also possible if we all study spirituality. All right. And that's that. So we've just finished number four. All right, so we'll stop there today. All right, at number four, we'll carry on. We've still got until the 15th of April till PESA. And during PESA, it takes a week, as you know. Uh, we'll still study as well during that period. But it's nice to get used to it and um, warm up to these situations. And as you know, it's not about a calendar date. We should always be going through these states called PESA all the time in our work during the year okay so this is an inner state a spiritual state and the holiday is just a representation of these inner states that we should be going through day by day actually all right so we're going to love you and leave you as usual and we don't have any drums from above next week same time same place have a good one <laughs>